it's time to talk about everything in the world of Batman comic books. And basically, we're just going to focus on the comics this week. We've got World's Finest number two. We got Nightwing 91 as well as Batman the Night number four. And with me, as always, is the Batman historian, the DC aficionado himself, Josh McDonald. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, Wes. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Well, I was doing fantastic after finishing one of these comic books. There's one of these things the, that just really stands out. I'm shocked that Mark Wade might be writing the best comic book in all of Marvel or DC at the moment. World's Finest number two with Dan Moore on art. We can't forget about him. This thing is absolutely fantastic. It feels like a blueprint for DC Comics to really unscrew themselves and get back to superhero storytelling. That's why this thing is so great. Not only do you get spectacular art, but it feels like just a really fun comic book. Yeah, I, you know, I think one of the best things about Batman and Superman World's Finest is it, it. you can sum it up in two ideas. It's not decompressed and it's not deconstructed. It's just a like balls to the wall action adventure. Let's have some fun. Let's tell some stories. He He's cramming more plot into each issue that a lot of writers are cramming into arcs right now. So I'll take it. Yeah, it's just really shocking that Mark Wade, who hasn't really had a hit comic book in a very long time, a lot of his stuff over at Marvel just wasn't hitting. But he gets on these characters in the DC universe, and he just understands it. I almost feel like he should be the the overall like director of everything going on at DC creatively and really make sure that people are focusing on the characters because when you nail the characters and you nail these fun stories, you don't have to go and do the world's biggest, most dangerous villain type thing. You can actually tell a really fun story. And His his overall knowledge of the universe is what helps this book excel. And we, we get uh, another character that comes in too that was kind of unexpected but plays a fun role and not in how you would typically think of it, but it's Billy Batson. Uh, so he pops up here. When you have a knowledge of the greater DC universe and its history, which is unlike a lot of current writers, you can do a lot of fun things without having to try to make it a big deal. There's there's no big deal about the inclusion of these characters. They're just included and they make sense for the story. Yeah, this one opens up. Obviously, we saw the, the Doom Patrol in the very first issue, which came as a surprise to me. I didn't wasn't really looking at the covers and whatnot. Superman is infected with the red kryptonite. They're doing open heart surgery on him. It's uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. We end up seeing negative man in Superman. Yeah, like they do some really cool stuff. They've got they're trying to get the red kryptonite uh, compound out of his blood, so they they send negative man in there and uh, to kind of pull it out. You have as many interesting things as you can come to expect when you get the Doom Patrol with Batman and Superman and Robin. And speaking of Robin, I thought he was a lot of fun here. He's got a good comedic timing. The jokes landed. They didn't feel too out of place. It was kind of tongue in cheek towards the the Batman 66 era without being that hokey or cheesy. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it. It's also fun. There's a little interaction between Batman and the leader of the Doom Patrol. Batman says, what are you doing? Are you spying on everybody? He goes, I, I choose to say that I'm monitoring my allies and my, and my uh, enemies at the same time. And we're going to talk about this later. And they find out about Billy Bats and they go in there. And they set off in like these two different journeys. Like you got two teams. You got Batman and Superman going after Felix Faust to try and save Billy Bats. And, and they send Supergirl and Robin into the past to go find the the uh, the heroes that originally, I don't know, I guess uh, vanquished this yep. villain that's come back that feels really powerful. But I love it when they do stuff like this. They end up going to the insane places. Obviously, you know, going back in time with the with the two sidekick characters. You know, it feels like this character, this new villain, is a threat to both of them. He's got magic on his side, so right there, he's a threat to Superman and. You know, he seems to be uh, pretty formidable at, at manipulating the villains in the DC universe to go after Batman as well. The more you learn about him, too, the more you understand why certain characters are being brought in. Uh, but kind of like a, a, I guess, like a general that this new character is using is Felix Faust, which is, um, you know, a magic based character. And there's a fun play into that and what what his powers typically are and what his powers are now with this new villain. Yeah, I loved it when Super Supergirl and Robin are going into the past. He does not <laughs> like being flowed, and they're bickering. And apparently, the last time that they were together, it didn't go very well. I I did laugh out loud at the nice pants joke when uh, Supergirl <laughs> told him nice pants. I was like, that's that's good. Like that's good writing. And it's funny. It's simple. It makes sense. Like this is what happens when you get a good writer, guys. Yeah, I just feel like this is the direction that DC went. People would be coming back in droves. And we do get the final reveal that Superman and Batman, they've been bamboozled by old hmm. Felix Faust and sent to hell as a part of this big <laughs> elaborate plan. 
It was like, this is great. Superman and Batman and her in hell. Robin and, and Supergirl are back in time. They're going to have to fight their ways out of it to, to get together to finally fight this big villain together. The hell reveal was was a fun twist. Uh, the, the twist of Robin and Supergirl going to get help from the past and then it kind of turning against them. It's classic storytelling. You know, when you think classic storytelling, you think, well, that should be predictable, but it's not. You know, he, he's doing it in a fun, distinct way. Um, and it's keeping you on your toes. It's making me excited to come back to see what happens next week and that's rare in comics these days it almost feels like it's it's super fast paced because it's not decompressed like most everything yeah. else going on at dc comics it's almost like it's almost like a shot of, of coffee or something like whoa what's going on my my heart's going at a million miles a minute here but it's so much fun and i just i feel like this is the blueprint these yeah. are the types of stories they need to focus in on and eventually you move over to the big event of the crossover. Maybe you can explore mm -hmm. some new new things, but just get back to the roots of the character. Show people why they're amazing. Show them why the friendship between Superman and, and uh, Batman is great. Uh, Supergirl and Robin as well. It's back to the basics, but in the best way possible. Agreed. I completely agree. I, I think this is a, a fun story that has a heroic journey. Um, and if you're not reading it, you're definitely missing out. If you if you read comics, today's comics, and you think, man, I miss the way comics used to be, then this is the book for you. So just just take it or leave it. That is my advice. We'll take that juxtaposed to Nightwing 91 <laughs> from Tom Taylor, another team up book. We got The Flash and we've got Nightwing teaming up. And it feels like there's no stakes. It's not very fast paced. And mm -hmm. when you meet the villain, feels completely unformidable whatsoever. You know that they're going to win. And uh, there's a couple of moments that I like in the book. But for the most yep. part, it's just this problem that Tom Taylor's Nightwing has. It's just been sitting over it for like a cloud. It has not moved for a fucking year. This, no. this series has been out for over a year. Nothing has concluded. They haven't done one story arc. They haven't concluded anything. He just throws ideas out there visits them half ass and then moves on to the next idea. I, there's a point when reading this and they they reference a, a, a new villain in this issue. And the moment they reference it, I was like, w did we ever resolve Heartless? And we haven't. And then they <laughs> mention him at the end. And I'm just like, dude, like I've gotten no payoffs yet. Like none. I need something. But yeah, you talked about how it, it didn't feel like anything really happened. And it almost feels like Tom Taylor had things that he wanted to say, not necessarily impactful things, just between Wally and Dick that he wanted to, to put on paper. And then instead of crafting a story and putting that in there, it feels like he wrote those and then crafted a story around it. So the purpose of the book wasn't the story. The purpose of the book was what he had these two characters say. And at the end of the day, it wasn't anything important. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that groundbreaking. It was like, all right, cool. Like, thanks for this huge monologue, Wally. But no, we didn't need that. <laughs> There's weird places. It's like an editor's note where they're referencing what happened with KG Beast, essentially oh. shooting uh, Dick Grayson in the head, giving him amnesia. And it's re referencing you over to Nightwing instead of Batman 55 where it happened. For some reason, Wally West feels like he needs to exact revenge on KG Beast for what happened. To Dick Grayson, Batman already did that. I believe in Batman 59. He essentially murdered him. He left him for dead. Yeah. It's like this stuff has already happened. Why are we revisiting it here? It's nothing wrong with, with mentioning that's where that information came from. But you're resolving things that were already resolved like two years ago. It also seemed weird from a motivation standpoint of like if Wally were there in the moment that Dick got shot, I can understand him responding that way. But Dick got shot. He survived. He's back to himself. He's been operating as Nightwing for a while now. They've had many interactions together since then. So the fact that he would just go on this like, I'm going to teach you a lesson and you're never going to try to kill Dick Grace or kill Nightwing again. Like, it, it just seems stupid. It was pointless. I didn't like that at all. And let's not even mention the fact that KG Beast comes off as a complete jabroni jobber <laughs> in here. He was no threat whatsoever. <laughs> Oh my god! I love that you said jabroni because now I just want to like, if I could do a good rock impersonation, I'd just be like, <laughs> "Who in the blue hell are you?" <laughs> it doesn't matter what your name is. Uh, yeah, no, he's he was a joke here, and I think that was part of the problem of this book too, is they make him a joke, and they have this this other uh, villain that they, you know, kind of pump up for a few pages. And then they do the same thing with, with this new villain. They make this person a joke as well. His Nightwing has interesting ideas, and I've liked some of them. I thought some of them worked. Some of them haven't as much. 
but he's done nothing with them for well no. over a year. This thing is stuck in neutral. It is stuck in the mud. It is not moving anywhere. Ruins the appeal of the series because it is a much better version of Nightwing than we were getting before this. I, I will agree. It's it's much better. And, you know, there are character moments that he has in this book, or in general, this issue, this book, and, and they're good character moments. It, it makes me feel like there are times when he definitely understands the character, and then there's times where he doesn't. But just the fact that we're getting some moments of Dick Grayson feeling like Dick Grayson is is definitely an improvement on what came before this. Let's go over to Batman the Night number four, Chip Zdarsky, Carmine, uh, I'm not even going to try to say that last name. This is the new origin story or retelling of the origin story from Chip Zdarsky, the writer on Batman coming up in the very near future. Uh, once again, it's a good tale. It feels like a lot of uh, influences from the movie Batman Begins, but without Ra's al Ghul. I think we knew this going into it. We There wasn't going to be anything groundbreaking here. We weren't going to delve into new territory. There wasn't going to be anything that was like earth shattering. And this is the first time we've ever seen it. Uh, and I don't think that was the intention. I think the intention here was we've had so many different universes and so many different like tellings of Batman's origins and how he trained and what he did and who he trained with, that the purpose of this was to like say, okay, here's a collective, you know, here's what happened for the sake of my story going forward. Uh, Cause we now know he is taking Batman. So I'm okay with the fact that it feels like it's something that's been retread. I think a lot of these plot points will, will play into his story once he gets into the main Batman title. So if you're hoping for something fresh and exciting, you're not going to get that. Perfectly fine read. I mean, I would recommend it if you're looking for something that reads well. Now, there is one thing that's hinted at here, and you think that it's not anything new. They talk about this benefactor that is sending these assassins in to get trained at the same place that, that Bruce Wayne's getting trained and ends up leaving. The obvious answer is the benefactor is Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. But it could be a new character. That was kind of my one hope out of this was maybe this is a new villain or a new character that will come in in later for the Batman series itself. I Look, I'm all for new characters, and I think something fresh would, would be a good jolt of energy for this book. My concern is that DC's doing so many new characters that are just derivatives of characters that they already have for the sake of not making the obvious choice of picking the character that they already have. And then it's just like, it just never seems to deliver. So for me, I just hope that it's Ra's al Ghul because I, if you try to do a cheaper version of Ra's al Ghul, it's not going to pay off. Uh, if they can find a way to do something a little bit sidestepped of Ra's al Ghul, but similar, great. But yeah, that that is the only reason I want it to go ahead and be the obvious answer. Uh, I know that won't be popular with some people. And you know what, Wes, you're probably right with what they're doing in Batman right now with Ra's. It's probably not him. I just, I kind of hope it is. <laughs> so it, it was not the worst week ever in Batman. We had a couple of things that really stand out, specifically World's Finest Batman Superman number two. This is a highest recommendation. It's like a four and a half, five star comic book. Mark Wade and Dan Moore knock it out of the park. I would certainly recommend Batman the Night. It's not a highly recommend. Not that it's not well written and well illustrated. It just feels like there's not, not a lot new going on there. Nightwing 91, I don't think it's bad. It's just I could take her or leave it. You know, you don't yeah. need to read this. No. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy about Nightwing too? Just I'm sorry to go back to this, but it started off with a good momentum. And then the moment it hit Fear State, it has just been spinning its wheels ever since. There aren't any bad books this week. It's just you you got one that's good but not needed, one that's okay at best, not needed, and then hey, you have Batman and Superman. Go get Batman and Superman. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. If you are like myself and Josh and are an enormous Nightwing fan, I've got a great two-part video for you. This is the first part talking about why Dick Grayson is such an amazing character. We've also got part two here for you. Once you see that one, go check out this one. Talking about the sad state Nightwing was in just about a year and a half, two years ago. Definitely check these out if you're a big Nightwing fan. 